Hey guys, and welcome to Gwent, the Witcher card game. My name is Jagaris, and today I have a ranked monsters deck for you guys, and that is a Dagon Swarm Harpy deck. And I really like this version of this deck. I find like it's very effective and it's really fun to play on ladder. This deck is one that you have to be a little bit careful with your mulligan because you're running three harpies, which are going to be playing beasts to uh, draw, uh, along with a foglet, which are going to be drawing with fog, and roach, which are going to be drawing with a gold card. You actually have five different mulligan targets, and worst case scenario, you draw all of these, life can be pretty annoying. Ultimately, though, this doesn't tend to happen, and I feel like the deck is pretty consistent. So the gist of this deck is that we're going to be making some tempo plays. We have our Woodland Spirit, spawn three Rabbit Wolves and apply Fog. So we can use this to spawn Fog, which also then plays Rabbit Wolves, which are beasts. And if you play three Rabbit Wolves, that will then pull a Harpy from your deck, as well as applying Fog, pulling the Fogler and pulling Roach. So this is a huge tempo play. Um, and we actually have Renew that allows us to play this multiple times. Then to ensure we have enough Harpies in our deck, we have a couple Necka Warriors, which we can use to duplicate the Harpies and put them at the bottom of our deck. We also have three Solano Harpies, spawn two Harpy Eggs to the left of this unit, so we can use these to spawn eggs. And we have three Ekamaras, which we can use to eat the eggs and also give us carryover. We technically actually have four Ekamaras because we have Dora Gure, uh, who allows you to spawn an Ekamara along with a Drowner, a Wyvern, or a Savage Bear, so we have that option as well. We then have three Arch Griffins, which we're going to be using for Weather Clear. These are also beasts, so we can use them to trigger the countdown on our Harpies. And Harpies themselves are beasts, so they actually trigger the countdown on other Harpies, which is quite cool. Um, and so we have Arch Griffins we can use to remove Weather. We can also use this to move cards from one graveyard to the other, which is particularly useful sometimes against, say, Skellige, or even putting something into your opponent's graveyard. Speaking of being useful against Skellige, we then have Caretaker. Now, a lot of people like to run Yennefer in place of Caretaker, but Yennefer is really not that great in the mirror. So this gives us the edge in the mirror. And I think it also gives us um, an edge against Skellige because we can then use this along with Renew in order to take cards out of the graveyard that your opponent might want to resurrect. You could Caretaker or Gied, for example. Alternatively, Gremist or Dora Gray, if you're worried that they're gonna play Restore on those, then you can just take them away from your opponent, which I think is pretty damn useful. We have Morvod as a lock. Having a lock in decks is really useful at the moment, and the fact that he also halves the opponent's power along with the lock means that he's usually not bad tempo. Uh, we have Royal Decree to really help us find Woodland Spirit. This is a key card in this deck. And we have Renew, which we'll generally use to replay Woodland Spirit, though sometimes it is useful to replay Caretaker. On top of that, we have a Scorch, because as you can see, none of our units are particularly big. If we Ekamara an Egg, that's going to be quite big, but we can usually hold off on doing that um, while we use our Scorch. And Commander's Horn is really good to boost adjacents because each Solano Harpy actually spawns two eggs to the left of it. So we can use this to set up Commander's Horn quite easily. And then I like to run White Frost, personally. This is the kind of flex card, the one that you're gonna be able to change. Some people like to run Becca's Twisted Mirror. Some people like to run Ifrit, for example. But for me, I really, really like White Frost. I think that because we have the big tempo plays in Woodland Spirit, sometimes you can afford to make a slower, more long-term play like White Frost. And often players will remove weather with your fog um, because they don't expect the White Frost. The other thing to be aware of is a lot of people aren't running gold weather at the moment, so weather clear in general has gone down. So at the moment, White Frost, I think, is a great tech card in decks. Um, and it's one that I personally like to run in my version of this deck. Uh, the other, you know, kind of big difference being Caretaker instead of Yennefer. Anyway, guys, if you like this deck, hit that thumbs up button. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And without further ado, I'll jump into a ranked game and I'll showcase this deck in action for you. Onward, sons of Nilfgaard! Okay, so we're at John Calvay, which means spies. In terms of the mulligan, you want to get rid of any harpies that you might have. Now, ideally, if you have uh, harpies, let's say you have two harpies, then foglet, then... Roach, what you want to do is mulligan one harpy first, which blacklists it stopping you drawing others, then mulligan the foglet, and then mulligan roach, because you can always hold on to one harpy, and that's relatively okay. As it is, though, we can just mulligan this foglet. We have two Necker Warriors. I usually feel like two Necker Warriors is a little bit overkill, so I'm usually happy to mulligan one. And at this stage, if we mulligan again, we risk pulling a harpy or roach, so we have to decide if we're happy with our current hand versus our opponent. Um, and I'm going to actually mulligan an Arch Griffin because we don't generally need weather clear. This is a risky mulligan, but I feel like I want to take the risk. And that, that is why you don't do it, you guys. That is, I'm just like, you probably shouldn't do this and then just do it anyway. But we can mulligan in this in the next turn. So generally it should be okay. If you have to go first, generally I like to open with a Seleno Harpy. Uh, so that is 
usually what I will start with, basically to get some points on the board and you're ready then for Ekamara's. Unfortunately, he's got the Imperial Forces he can use to damage units. Interestingly, he didn't damage our Harpies. Uh, we don't actually have a... Uh, we don't actually have a... Woodland Spirit, unfortunately, or Royal... Do basically any of the cards we can use to get Woodland Spirit. So we're going to play Dagon to thin the Foglet. There it is. And we'll also apply pressure to this row. And this might not be a great long round for us because we're missing a lot of our kind of tempo cards. Please wait, your we do have Scorch though, which behind. is really good against his... Oh, these eggs are getting shot. I don't know why he's not shooting the eggs. This is such a weird decision. Like, you kill the, the Foglet, it doesn't fucking matter. Very, very strange decision for making process. Lots of points there, unfortunately, uh, on our opponent. We can scorch a six, but it's really not worth it. We expect him to play the uh, Imperial Brigades. So because we expect Imperial Brigades, it makes sense to just wait here um, and hold our scorch, because generally he should have a target bigger than 11. Alternatively, if he plays Joaquin, we'll expect to see a target bigger than 11. And the thing to be aware of in this matchup is that if he infiltrators one of your units, which he definitely can do, if he plays an infiltrator, then just be aware that you can... If he shoots the one that he just played, these actually don't shoot the ones that he wants. But uh, if he plays an infiltrator, just be aware that um, you can eat with an Ekamara uh, the thing that's been given the spy tag, and that will obviously stop him from getting the power that he wants. There's Calve. This setup's a bit awkward for us in that we can't really play the Frost because he played units on the middle row, so we would be kind of just messing up our fog. He's getting a lot of points out of these enforcers, and if you had more VUD, this is the kind of situation where you want to play it. And he's managed to kill one of our Ekamaras there. We're now going to play the Neko Warrior and get- Oh shit, I clicked Ekamaras! I meant to get Harpies, we've got extra Ekamaras at the bottom of our deck. That was a misclick if ever there was one. It helps if you don't misclick your own cards. I'm going to put that one out there. So this has a spy tag, which means he can kill it with a Nozaka. The question is whether we want to try and eat it now and win the round. This is only going to be an eight point play, plus Fog is one, no, two. So that would put us ahead. It helps if you don't misclick your own units. All right, let's go Ekamara. The question is, do I eat this one? Is he going to play another Nozaka? He can meno it. I think we have to eat it. I mean, he has no carryover, so I think it's ultimately okay to do that. We have almost killed two enforcers now. He's probably running low on spies. I'm so very, very afraid. She's dead. I think we pass here. Although we can scorch for 28. I think we got a scorch for 28, right? That's gonna put us so far ahead. He's committed Iris, so I feel like a 28-point Scorch. I mean, we generally want to kill his Nozaka, but it is how it is. Overdose. We're six points down. Let's play this. We can move something into his graveyard or into our graveyard. I'm just wondering if there's anything I want. I can actually caretake the Infiltrator if he does make one of my units a spy. Uh, and I think I'm going to put an Emissary across into his graveyard, such that if I want to resurrect one of those to try and find something, I can. No door is closed to me. So as I said, we can caretaker and infiltrator here. And if we caretaker and infiltrator, that'll put us ahead and stop this uh, target from being killed. So let's do that. Caretaker. This is quite a big commitment. We can't really commit any more cards here. Though that was a tempo play. Into infiltrator. Uh, we'll put on the middle row. I always find and we'll turn the spy tag off of our Ekamara. Is he going to catch us with this play? If he plays Rainfarn or Joaquim, then maybe he'll catch us. But as we currently stand, we're in a really nice spot. Okay. Into Joaquim. Is that what you wanted there? That's a big boy play. That is a big boy play. I think we pass here. We got his Vilgeforts, we got his Joaquim, and we have carryover. So he's likely to try pass because he doesn't want to have card disadvantage. The issue we have here is that we have a Harpy. The fog in the middle meant that we couldn't really play Frost. And that does happen sometimes. And that is the kind of risk of Frost. Um, and also I, for some reason, duplicated Ekamaras. As you do. Royal Decree is going to give us Woodland Spirit, which is huge. A Arch Griffin is great. Let's throw this Harpy. Ekamara. So the question is, does he try and 2-0 us? 
He's gone for Cantarella to try and give himself card advantage, which is fair enough. We can't pass because he'll just win. So in this situation, uh, we Ekamara. And I'm actually going to eat Cantarella to stop him from menoing it. This basically means that he probably won't play into this round because we ate his Benno target. Vicavaro mm. into... Infiltrator? Oh no. Oh wait, does he have one in here? I can't resurrect it, can I? I can actually. If I play my Royal Decree, I can stop this from happening by playing Renew into Caretaker into the infiltrator he played on the last round. Jesus not Christ. By strength, then no, by it's not happening. <laughs> no menos, no menos. Does he have another Vicavaro? If he has another Vicavaro, we're kind of fucked. That's Rainfarn. Wow, he's really invested in this round. Your humble servant. I guess we play the Frost. It's not a great play. I'd rather mulligan it. Oh wow, he just forfeited. I guess he had nothing. Like, that was not going great for us, uh, and we still managed to win it. There was some misplays on my part, which I apologize for, but apparently we just get all of his tempo plays, and then everything is Gucci. So I, he must have expected Woodland Spirit in the final round, which we didn't have. Let's jump into another game, and I'll showcase this deck in action once more for you guys. What the fuck is going on? Everyone's just forfeiting today. Okay, so Dagon Mirror actually favors us usually. I don't typically lose against monsters. I'm gonna lose against monsters now because I've said that. We've got two Harpies and we have Roach. So we want to mulligan Roach first because if we pulled a Foglet there, we would want to mulligan that over the Harpy. We also pulled Renew and no targets for Renew. So life is pretty awkward for us. And we have to go first, but we do have two Weather Clears, so that's nice. Um, so I'm gonna open with a Harpy, like so. This gives him an option to weather me. Uh, which they usually take if they have it. This is the thing to be aware of. Now this could be consume. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. This could be this could be a, a consume deck. Uh, I don't know. Usually it's not, but it's it's definitely something that's possible. So more we want to be aware of is gonna be really useful if it is consume, because then we can lock his neckers. And here comes the weather. And we can actually take his foglet here, which is the thing I like about this play. We can play the weather clear, clear the weather, grab his foglet, and then we get a harpy and pop one of his eggs. So all in all, I'm happy. And now that the harpy's out, we can look to play the Necker Warriors. And there you go, it is Consume. So Consume is an interesting one because we have Scorch in hand. So we're actually really happy here with how things are uh, in terms of the state of the game. Um, I'm okay to let this just eat things because we can kill it. And we have Morvud to lock his Neckers. So it's pretty much okay. We could commit... Uh, Dagon, and we probably should do that actually sooner rather than later. But if we're gonna do that, it's maybe better to commit it to a different row. There's more weather. He doesn't have a foglet. He pulled his harpies, but he doesn't have a foglet. So we'll clear weather again. And we'll take this fog. This is in my graveyard, so obviously I don't want to take that. Um, we'll just clear the weather. He is ahead of us, actually, so this is kind of awkward because he, he can pass to get two card advantage. But we have carryover and he doesn't. So, I'm okay going two cards down. This is 9, 10, 11. This is an 11 point play. Ekamara. We don't really want to lock the Ekamara. Do we take the 11 point play? Do we pass on even? I don't really want to pass on even. Hmm. I didn't actually have to play that in this row. That was kind of silly of me. We'll play this. This is going to whittle away the Akamara. He can pass and get two cards. I'm guessing he takes his Foglet back. He probably took his Foglet back. We're nine card points down. 
So I can scorch and I'll be ahead. I'm actually seven points down. He's gonna get this eat, which gives us a bigger scorch. I still think we're okay to play into this round. Like, he's clearly not- doesn't want to pass for two card advantage. Like, he clearly does not want to do that. We can give him one card advantage and pass on even. The question then becomes, will we beat him on the next round? With what we have in hand. The current answer is no, because we have nothing to renew. We do have a 24 point Scorch though. And I think, you know, now is probably the time to play it. Just commit to the round and take the 24 points where we can get them. We are now 20 points up. Which is nice, we have Fog Ticking as well. So this is probably where he's looking to pass. Our carryover is bigger than his, so we can dry pass him. But if we dry pass him, he'll probably play a Necker. That is the thing you have to be aware of. It's an Arrakis Venom. Commander's Horn would be nice about now. Okay, so we're seven points up. I think we play the Solano Harpy. And just keep playing into the round. The more cards I can kind of get out of him now, really the better. Uh, because... Ultimately, he doesn't have a lot of tempo other than his Neckers for later rounds. So the more kind of consuming and stuff that he does now, you know, the better for us. We are 16, 17 points up. I, I mean, I think he should have passed because we did not have tempo to keep up with his consumes. And there's the pass here. And this is kind of good for us. We could dry pass, like I say. Um, but he'll probably just play a Necker Warrior if we do that. And then he'll have carryover because he's had quite a few eats. Probably about five or six. And the thing is, we are, you know, four points up here. The problem is, you know, we're not going to see value out of Renew at the moment. There's Mulligan Roach. Ooh, this is a nice hand. We probably want to play into this hand, to be honest. Because we have everything that we really need. Uh, we can take a Buyer out of his graveyard. And that's quite useful. We can take a Griffin. We can take a Harpy. Hmm. I'm not entirely sure how we open here is the only issue. I'm really tempted to, to try and force the round. A bias spawns what rain. Arrakis Venom is not so good for us here. But we don't want a Morvud is the thing. So I think what we do for now is we Woodland Spirit. But we're not going to get huge value out of Fog if we do it this way. Or we pass and go into the final round with these cards. Which is not too bad of a play either. But then we have nothing to renew, so we have to play something. Unless we can eat the Woodland Spirit. But we don't have any eats in hand, so we'd have to draw an Ekamara. Um, and all in all, it would just be a bit awkward. So let's just do this. It's going to pull a Harpy. Uh, which is kind of awkward, because we then just fog the back row. But we're on 30 points, and he's on zero. And this is where he's going to have to play as Neckers. And this is where we can then lock them. Cat a can into what Arch Griffin is usually what they go for. I mean, maybe we just res a Harpy. Harpy's not a bad res, all things considered. Harpy's not a bad res. A buy is the ideal res. The question is whether we want to take it now, right? That is our kind of question. Otherwise, we take a Harpy. Uh, or we can take. Can we take an. Oh, we can take an Ekamara, actually. Maybe we just res an Ekamara. Get ourselves some carryover. I think we do that. And we'll eat. Ideally, we could eat Woodland Spirit such that if we want to replay it, we can. I think that's probably the smart eat here. It also keeps us below him such that if he happens to have Scorch, that we're protected. There's Yells. I'm wondering if we just go for a 2-0 here. We're on 40 points. We can lock his Neckers, but he has to play his Neckers. The issue is like, obviously we ate the Woodland Spirit, but the Woodland Spirit's not gonna pull, the Woodland Spirit's not gonna kill pull the Fog Look. So it's gonna be five, six, seven, eight, and then a bunch of points from the Fog. He's currently, how many points behind us? He's 14 points behind us. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Renew is a ten-point play. Twelve if you include Morphod. Then he has to play a card. But like at the moment, he's not played his Necker. Maybe he doesn't have them. 
That is our question. He's going to draw a silver into the next round. That's something that we are aware of. I think we pass for now. I don't think his Necker Warriors are worth, or his, uh, I don't think his um, Neckers are worth 14. I think they're probably closer to like a 10, 11. So we should be okay to play this and he'll have to play two cards. Yep, there's one. And then we go cards up into the final round with Renew and more Vod. Six. Why did he, wait. That's a 12 point play, yeah, so it's not enough. So he really had to invest into this round. Which is quite painful. The issue is if he eats the Necker, he'll pull another one. But if he eats the Necker, we can still half whatever it is that he pulls with the Morvod. And we had the Woodland Spirit carryover. This Harpy is not what we want to see. So you can bugger off. Ekamara is okay. It's, you know, it's six points. Okay, so he's got them here. So there's no real point in locking anything right now. Um, so let's just get this fog on the go. And this will also pull us some Harpies. So we should get... A decent amount of damage. There's two harpies. Three harpies, Jesus Christ, from this play and the foglet. Look at that. That's just nasty. Oh, of course they stack the row. As it is, though, we're plenty of points ahead. Um, so, how do I want to win this? I guess we can play the Ekamara. We'll eat this. And there you go. And he played misplayed round one for sure. Like, he could have, you know, passed round one. Um... And got a two card advantage, but he didn't want to do it. He really wanted that round one. And then in the end didn't get it because of the Scorch. Which he should have seen coming because Dagon Swarm just runs Scorch. So, I mean, if we had gone two count cards down, we did have the lock for the Neckers. Um, so I was quite confident in the final round. Or even just passing it because we had more carryover. Getting that card back and then using the lock for the Neckers. So, like, I feel like it would have been okay either way. Especially with our hand. Um, but yeah, that's more or less it for the Swarm deck. I, it's really successful, as you can see by my... Uh, by my MMR. I really like it. Um, and I really like White Frost in it, even though we didn't see it played today. Uh, it does it does kind of take people by surprise, and you can get a lot of value out of it. Though, if you're not finding it useful, you know, things like Ifrit or... Uh, some people like to use Becca's Twisted Mirror. Th those work. Alternatively, you could go Hailstorm if you really fancy. It's, it's kind of up to you, really. That's the most... I think that's a flex slot, um, and that's the one that you can kind of play around with. But yeah, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. You can always subscribe to the channel. And if you want to see me playing Gwent live, I have been playing this deck uh, yesterday, for example, you can find me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Jagaris. Uh, and on Twitter, at Jagaris. Have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye!